the community. How are you? Well, welcome everyone to the Blender Today live show. Every week we get together to see what's new in Blender since uh, last week, since the last seven days. For that, we run a little script that goes through all the changes in Blender and uh, we uh, we done like maybe make a little cleanup and um, pick what is the best to highlight. There are also community updates, but uh, not this week, actually. This week has been pretty, pretty mild so far. It's been, um, it, it's at the beginning of March. At the end of this month, we have a new Blender. Yeah, Blender 3.5 goes uh, like full live and it's going to be released. But, um, and that is like the, the last release before the LTS. And Blender 3.6 being an LTS, a long-term release, it's going to have a, um, it, it's already looking like a quite a, a keeper, I would say, like something that, uh, yeah, if uh, productions are going to stick with it, I think it's a, it's a good one to, to, to stick with. Other than that, 4.0 is already also having some conversations here and there in the, in the, in the, um, in the tracker or in like where, where you follow the news in the project of Blender.org. So pretty exciting times ahead. Is it still weird that we are going to have 4.0 at the end of the of this year? Crazy. Crazy. Other than that, we are streaming live all the way from uh, Amsterdam, wherever you are. And I'm following here what are the comments. So drop some comments in the chat, but I might miss some because I'm reading what's new. So if you want to see um, also, all the links that I'm, I'm sharing, I made a blog post that is um, like a little Bible with literally the raw output of the script that I ran to go through all the commits in the last seven days. So it has everything and, and more. I'm going to pick some of these changes and mention them here. But uh, if you want to leave some, uh, some questions that I can answer towards the end of the show, please do it, uh, leave it uh, there. Other than that, Ah, for that, you only need to log in with your Blender ID. You don't need much more than that. I think we are ready to start. I don't I don't think we have any other announcements this week. Uh, maybe just a reminder that um, if you are a student and are looking for something cool to do this summer, instead of uh, enjoying the summer, you can also enjoy it and code at the same time. So in the wiki.blender.org under the Google Summer of Code link, you're going to see uh, a bit of uh, what the Google Summer of Code project uh, is and that the contribu contributions will, applications will start in March 20th. So there is some time for you to, you know, uh, catch up and prepare some uh, applications and maybe think of some of the projects. Getting started ideas and suggestions if you want to, like, if you don't know what to work on, uh, on uh, here are some of these. Uh, ideas, some inspiration from previous years, things that didn't make it into Blender, or also what a better, better inspiration than going to right click select and uh, sort by top and then, okay, uh, there, there may be reasons why some of these top uh, <laughs> um, proposals haven't been made, but um, you can also filter by uh, different categories that you maybe feel more attracted to. Other than that, let Switch back into the what's new in Blender. So I'm not gonna go through this little list here. I made my selection and let's start with with the start of the show. Oops, it's not it's, it's not library linking. I'm sorry, but the title of this episode, which is Retopology Overlay. So um, for the longest time, Blender users have been in, uh, I've been mentioning how uh, rate topology mode. Well, Blender's rate topology it's it's non-existent, right? You can you can work around by entering edit mode and uh, maybe adding a shrink wrap modifier and uh, like you you can use pieces of Blender in order to do rate topology, but there's nothing anywhere in Blender that is okay. This is rate topology. Maybe the the not not even the build tool, the poly build. But anyway. This is the very first step in that direction. That uh, it's also a contribution from the community, from Jorin de Graaf, or Graaf, uh, depends how that she wanted. Jorin, Jorin, the I J is I, Jorin. Um, yeah, commit. Super small, super short to the point. Add overlay option for retopology, which hides the shaded mesh akin to hidden wire and offsets the edit mesh overlay towards the view because. 
if, if before adding any kind of tools or tooling for free topology, I think we need to, yeah, this had to be tackled. A way to see the, um, the geometry, but not see through it. Like th see what you're working, but not th see through itself. You know what I mean? Actually, it's easier just to go into Blender 3.6 alpha and uh, you can download it from the build bot from builder.blender.org and um, if you have a monkey and you have this monkey if you have for example if you were to do retopology you will create like a new like a new mesh like a new empty plane and then you will start by like snapping and uh, uh, turning on snapping and then um, adding geometry on top of uh, on top of the underlying one the overlay it's very very simple you just uh, go to the overlay options in edit mode and you're going to find under shading the retopology um is a is a toggle and then the uh, distance and offset it's in 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 units in distance units that is going to show or not okay let's 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 look like if i let's pretend i already did some retopology so i am adding susan right here and then i enter edit mode and as you can see this well i mean this is the same geometry but okay let's pretend this geometry actually underneath actually had like all these vertices and then i have this one in front so there um so yeah you can because this matches perfectly you're not going to notice much but after a certain distance the geometry is no longer visible so it is um it's it's really helpful of course you can tweak the uh, distance and then you're going to see that the the, the out as you change the distance the geometry is going to be hidden underneath which is what current what happens currently when you don't have that option on but now you have it now you can tweak it as precise as possible so there you go welcome overlay settings in the 3d viewport isn't that nice because, because it's mainly about what it means right this is okay this is hidden wire which is some offset but also i mean the offset thing is already useful but also this is the first time we see over anything regarding retopology in blender so i'm pretty happy that and also i'm pretty happy that it's a new contributor the you're in the graph it's uh it's, it's it's new and taken into such a big task so yes thank you Yorain. and uh let's see more contributions from the developers and also i'm low-key happy that the name sounds kind of dutch maybe belgium man. so that means that who knows maybe in the future is a it's a promise to have over one day i don't know at the working at Blender. Totally awesome. Um, of course, you can work at Blender for anywhere in the world, but being in the Netherlands kind of helps to be together. Um, all right, so that's it with the... I, I'm, I'm sorting all of this uh, alphabetically, these, these updates. So the next is A for animation. And in animation, we have a only one change this week highlighted as animation. But the change it's um, it's actually a removal of an operator that apparently not many people has been using and it's getting on the way of further improvements in, in in blender itself so the tool that has been removed is the operator for fixed deforms in weight paint uh, mode um, based on some discussion from the module team and based on feedback from the community it hasn't been used much and it's uh, yeah for improving stuff in this area sometimes it's good for doing some spring uh spring cleaning then next change actually this is uh it's, it's before build for building so when you build blender uh, there are some um you can build a blender as small as you want like you can you can rip many parts of it off and uh, some of the libraries actually are like like real required dependencies in blender and uh, one of them is OpenImage.io. And why do I mention this? Why is it important? Well, if you build Blender, you may want to know about this. Although if you wanted to have like cycles, <laughs> uh, you already needed this library. But I like to mention it because it it uh, it could have benefits in the in the near future. Um, oh, not also, not only by um, 
unifying how OpenImage.io is a library for saving and, and loading and of, uh, of images, right? And this library can take care of in the future. For example, Blender right now has its own um, like code to handle JPEGs, TIFF, PNGs, um, and other other modes in, in Blender. Um, this can sometimes lead to issues between how you save an image for or a render from Eevee and Cycles, or for example, if you want to support in the future something like RAW, uh, which is part of uh, not part of Blender, but it's part of OpenImage.io, so should, 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 that should make things easier in the future. Um, but also, even the even the like the binary size of Blender could be smaller. And um, that here, there is a, a list of the all the formats that are in Blender currently and are supported or not in um, in OpenImage.io. And DDS is one of them that might be getting some um, improvements thanks to this change. And also, the iris format is not implemented in OpenImage.io because iris is from like silicon graphics, really, really old. If anyone out there is still using it, uh, shout out, please let, let us know because it, um, it it's really, really, really old, like 80s old. Although things from the 80s are not old, not all of them. Next change. Um, let's go with C4 Compositor. This is a fix, actually. Um, so the Compositor output should follow the active node, right? Similar to the to the shading node. So the the change goes as follows: that when using multiple Compositor output nodes, which could happen, like material output, uh, compositing would fail showing a completely black output as it doesn't respect the active node. This patch will equalize implementation with the viewer nodes. So it makes them match. So that should not be an issue anymore. And let's switch into another project we see, which is Cycles. Cycles has the has two changes. One of them is user facing, but very, very uh, subtle. Although this is part of the greater improvements that are being done in shading and also in the principal VSDF version two upcoming one day in your nearest Blender. Um, this has to do with the uh, Fresnel on glass closures. So I mentioned in the show a few times in the past, the presentation by Lucas Tochner at the Blender conference uh, last year, <coughs> sorry, at the conference where he shows um, improvements to the principal DSDF shader, uh, uh, yeah, shader. And also some other improvements related to Fresnel, where it could happen that the effect, Fresnel effect, will darken the sides of your of your glass shaders, and this has been solved apparently in here. There's no link here, but I asked uh, the module, and they updated the wiki page. We need a dark mode for the wiki page, or we're all gonna go, yeah get sunburn from this uh, under 3.6 render and cycles improve Fresnel for glass with more accurate energy preservation so the I, I don't know if you can tell here you can tell this is the old model and this is the new model so you can see the Fresnel effect and this is gonna change your renders quite a lot so whatever you, if you are rendering something with 3.5 and don't switch to 3.6 halfway because your Fresnel, your objects with lots of Fresnel on glass are going to look quite different. You might need to do some tweaks in there. But it's for the greater good of energy preservation, one of the principles of um, PBR. Okay. And what else? There is another change in cycles, which is mentions material X, but don't get too excited yet. This is one small step towards supporting material X in the future. But actually what this means is that there is, um, there are some um, closures, microfacet closures in OSL that are based off material X. So Blender now supports them for OSL, but um, in the future means that it could support 
the ones from Material X. So yay for that. Just so you, if you see the name and you freak out, um, just trying to prevent heart attacks here. Uh, next is in. Oh, this is uh, well with E for Eevee. In Eevee, there is the um, this change for Intel GPUs on macOS. Apparently, there were some artifacts using Eevee. Um, apparently, splitting uh, something else that has to do with screen space reflections and light proofs. So this should fix that issue if you had any. Another big one for I O. Oh, let's this is I the I part. And no, actually this is I and O oh, input and output because the importer and exporter of PLY or Ply. I think most people say PLY format has been rewritten in C Welcome to the 21st century. The Python implementation is still the default. You're gonna still find it there. In where you like as always. However, there is now an experimental exporter importer of PLY, which is between 10 and 20 times faster, and also includes new support for point clouds with vertex colors, um, uh, PLY files with non standard line endings, exporting multiple objects properly. The importer now has the option to merge the vertices, and the exporter supports. Uh, exporting loose edges and vertices along with the UV map data. And also, welcome to C. This means that Blender now comes ships like with it built in, which is great because the less the, the less add-ons we have to load on, on load, Blender will loads faster. In case you didn't know, the more add-ons that you have enabled make Blender take longer to load. To register them all on load. So if you want Blender to run fast, do a, a spring spring cleaning of your add-ons list, and then um, no, that's it. Actually, there is a few other changes related to this, um, but um, the for example minor tricks, vertex color options changed to non sRGB and linear after the one, the previous commits, and the default is sRGB. Um, the name has changed from Stanford PLI PLY to just PLY. The export UVs option is by default on, and after importing the vertex colors, they are enabled for render because they didn't before. So very much uh, welcome. And last but not least, related to this, also the app axis update and forward axis update now share the same logic between PLY, OBJ, USD, and Alembic. Yay for unifying stuff. So who is the the last one that is a bit behind? Yeah, the one that starts with F and ends with X. Uh, ends with BX. FBX is the one, the only one missing day to the party. But yeah, PLY. Another format that it's is is uh, it's mostly used for 3D scanners, through like like medical, dental. Um, 3D scanning in general uses PLY because it's very, very simple. It's, it's similar to OBJ, but it can be extended, so it's, it has been used more in that regard. I don't know how it compares with STL because STL is also for geometry only, right? So, and it's very simple, very basic. And um, anyways, next change has to do with the mesh in general. So the mesh change is just a small, well, actually there, there were a few other cleanups that I don't mention here. You can find them in the thread that I made on Blender.today, but the, um, the change is that the UV seams, edge UV seams are now a generic attribute in Blender. So what does it mean for the user? Well, it depends. If you use Python, some things might change. If you are just using using it, it means that in the future it's gonna benefit from all the benefits <laughs> that have the internal and generic attributes. The attribute is called dot UV seam. It has a dot at the beginning, so it can be um, it can signal that you, uh, users that the attribute, like facets, isn't 
meant to be used in arbitrary procedural situations like geometry nodes and it uh, gives us more freedom to change things in the future as well but yeah it's the last generic that is still it's the last bit of extra information stored in mesh edges so everything is more generic and it could come with an improvement of a third of the memory consumption so very much welcome there um by the way the um like the person here that made the commit nathan rosen that is in the chat is in the house hello nathan thank you for your collaboration to you and your team it seems like a big team effort so uh yeah thank you for working on that what is what's next um it's a massive congratulations to have a work like that in an LTS release in 3.6. Sweet. And it's good because you're gonna get two years of chances to keep fixing whatever because the OBJ uh, imported exported when it was moved to C++, it took at least a few releases to get up to speed and uh, so people please test it. All right, that being said, let's move to the next change, which has to do... Oh, this is just a, a, a small, um, like a PSA mainly in uh, Python, P for Python. In the uh, console now, you're gonna see that the color of the output, it's different, it's a different color, it's just, just green instead of blue. Why do I mention this? Because it, it's not just that it's green, it's that it's now marked as an information output instead of an actual console output. Which means that when you run the script, the, the copy as script operator, it's not going to include all this text up here, which can be pretty annoying if you were, if you wanted to copy whatever you typed. Or in case you didn't know this command, you go to scripting, there is a copy as script, control shift C um, there, which is pretty handy. And now it doesn't copy this text. You paste, and it only paste this. It used to paste, copy the entire thing, and you had to go delete it. Pretty annoying. Not anymore. Okay, so that was P. Let's talk about U and I. UI, user interface. Two changes. One of them. This has been a request on right click select for a while. I I remember. Maybe. Um, I don't know if it's mentioned, but many people have been requesting being able to thicken the edges so or, or maybe change the, the the thickness of the of the edges so yeah the um change goes as follows so added edge with option in preferences for 3d view and uv image editor so both in the 3d view and in the image editor now you can change how thick is your are your edges so go to preferences if you don't know this menu, it's amazing. It's F4. I use it all the time. F4, bam, preferences. And then in the 3D viewport, next to the size of other stuff like um, vertex, edges, whatever. Now you have edge width. And now you can make your edges pretty thick. There you go. That's how is this going to impact your workflow? Um, I don't know. I think it can help, although one thing I'm not totally a fan of is that we cannot use the width of edges for anything else. Oh, how does edge select then look? Uh, okay, it's just darker. Or still thicker. Okay, you can still feel the difference. Vertex select, edge select, face select. Moi. Uh, I think we're I would leave the, the default as as it is now. As it's, uh, right now it's one pixel. We use two pixels as default. No, it gets too thick at the, after when you have too many vertices. What do you uh, what do you think? What's a good default? One, two. Um, next. Oh, okay. Here is a change that doesn't that it it's not user facing so it doesn't change your life yet but it can be the beginning of something I mean actually Nathan 
you are watching this, you made the exporter for PL, uh, imported exporter for PLY. Um, look at this change. So you know how uh, every week we get requests uh, from users saying, can I drag and drop a uh, FBX file or can I drag and drop an OBJ file in Blender? And we say, and, and I say no, because Blender's drag and drop system is pretty stupid and um, it relies on the icons for drag and dropping. So when you drag an image, it works because Blender gives images its own icon, right? In the in the image editor. Um, the, um, what else? Video or like movies um, work in the sequencer because they have their own icon. Um, blend files work because they have their own icon. So everything, you know, works because they have their own icon. But what happens about things that don't have an icon, like uh, files coming from like OBJ, PLY, FBX, whatever. Okay, so the change that was done this week, it's pretty significant because it's an internal change, not user facing changes yet. Julian Eisel did it, made it once and for all. Refactor path dropping so logic doesn't depend on icons. Instead, use the file extension to determine the file type. So that means look at look at the amount of work also. Like like if you look at it's it wasn't an easy change. It was like plunk, 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 lots of code. But that means that Blender. I, I want to look where is the dot blend extension. Anyway, it means that in the future, it shouldn't be too, it shouldn't, well, says the non-developer, it shouldn't be too hard to, to, to make Blender like run an operator based on other file formats. So Nathan, you're watching this, you implemented the PLY. Uh, do you feel inspired to maybe give it a try to see if you can make this work? Uh, get file, drag fat file type, maybe? See if it works with PLY? Because now that Blender uses it built in, although, ah, no, because, no, because it's experimental. The PLY imported exported C++, if, if it's an add-on, like the PLY uh, official imported exported at the moment, still, um, you have to detect that the add-on is enabled and that the add-on is um, available even. So it, you have to do some more coding in there. However, um, maybe for like for OBJ, which, which it's the official import export, that should be done. that could be done. Should be done eventually. Um, for well, any file format that is built in Blender and doesn't rely on add-ons, like how oh, USD. Wouldn't that be great? Okay. Um, other than that, I had any, I was listening music for myself. What if you have the wrong file format extension? It's a question by um, well, I mean, you can you can still import you can import anything basically if you force it from file import you can import anything but if you drag and drop a PLT don't expect it to work as a PLY right? Is this a live show? Yes, it is. Innocent Games, it is a live show. So that's why I have to hurry up actually. <laughs> anyway, so that was a non uh, non it it doesn't have any user facing change no behavior change intended. So if something stops working, please report it. Um, but yeah, no facing change intended. And to close this, let's go with you for use hash for collection. So okay, this commit is missing uh, the suffix, so that's why it's maybe um, hard to find. But it's a speed up for um, linking and unlinking objects via Python. Right now, it's about fifty times faster. So actually. Linking is, and then linking both is uh, 100,000 objects is about 50 times faster. Although unlinking all the objects in order, if you want to sort them before unlinking, uh, 
it's gonna be the same speed but hey python linking and linking got 50 times faster okay time to go back to well actually we, we went through all the, everything that's new this week so let's see what it's what are people are wondering about this week there's nine comments maybe i can make it before the end of the show all right let's go to the bottom then since there are not so many let's start with blender bob one and only blender bob let's see what is hi pablo hope you're doing well i hope you too i saw you in the chat earlier today for the blender channels uh, blender colors designing to start talking button doesn't work anymore any idea signing to start talking about um it might have broken with the latest update um this one signing to start talking yeah i think it, it broke in the latest update we are due for an update on the chat as soon as we because we use the rocket chat um, the ro rocket chat system for this they are on um, release candidate of their new major version so we are going to at some point not too far from now uh, up upgrade to this because they also introduced dark theme officially so we can make this planning image for background dark by default and that it's preserved when you refresh yes that basic anyways um so this will be uh looked into but for the time being what you can do is just simply click on the little door icon up here that's that says the same but this one actually works and here you can just log in with your blender id that's it so instead of pressing the the button uh down here maybe i should also hide it maybe with css somehow uh, you would you don't want to know all the hacky css i have to do on this thing to make it look not too bad in the current state anyway or also to hide all the rest of the login forms and stuff the next chain the next question by barf garbage says how did partner on one of the last episodes before christmas i asked about the access color but did not explain myself very well i found this post on right click select that explains it better and commented my own thoughts on the post what does your humongous intellect think of such a proposal? Uh, let's see. Currently, Blender only allows you to set the color of the axis X, Y, Z. Uh, in Maya, you have the ability to set individual colors for each translation X, rotation, and scale. Can be different colors, for example. The advantage of this is it's easier to tell the axis apart when you need to uh, such as when you're working in the graph editor and have multiple x curves which can be confusing when you have two x uh, two red x curves and you can tell the locations and this is, looks actually pretty pretty handy and also it looks pretty pretty um muscle memory breaking however we are pretty pretty close to a major release to blender 4.0 so maybe now is a good moment to uh, consider making this change. I, I I also think it's it could be could be useful useful to to basically go this this way to have different um, colors and uh, absolutely and even then um, like as a, as a base using similar colors to whatever other uh, software should do would be actually making life easier for everyone. And uh, since Blender users will have to adapt their muscle memory anyway. Yeah. So I'm going to leave this tab open here to remember. Maybe it's not so hard. Next. But yeah, I like uh, the, my human goes. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna upvote this. There. My updoot. Uh, Redditor would say. What is the next change sorry i'm trying to get some moist in my throat Silla says hi not sure if these are big changes in terms of work but they would certainly help a lot of people i saw the light linking was discussed at the recent cycles meeting so that's nice really did it oh my um how do i find out you go to dev talk blender.org let's go to um, cycles development 
And there must be a meeting notes here. Ah, no, because it's a module meeting. So it, sh it should be in Blender development, meetings, render and cycles meeting, four hours ago, six hours ago. Is there a man like thinking? There was a discussion on various design approaches regarding shader versus object controls, user interface, USD compatibility, etc. Currently, it seems that collections of lights most likely work best. Oh. Because other approaches, light shader based linking, do not work well uh, production setups, where setting up overrides for every shader would be messy. And we don't even have overrides for materials yet. A design problem that is also related to USD compatibility is that collections are not exactly what we want to link to but really a specific location instance in a stage, a path to a primitive in USC. But Blender has no concept of linking to that currently. So the topic has been brought up. Get involved, people. If you have experience, like we have people with experience here, Blender Bob, have you used light linking in a other software? If you do, if you have, uh, or you know people that has and can chime in, please get involved with the uh, with the module render cycles uh, module. I would also like to get involved, but I can only give my perspective from a Blender user point of view, which is it's good in a way because it's an old Blender user point of view. <laughs> but uh, not not old user, but old as in I've been using Blender for 20 years, kind of a thing. 21 years gonna be this year, Jesus. Okay, um, collections with transforms could be helpful thing for many absolutely this has been discussed several times in the past um, the word containers came to mind collection with uh, we uh, transformed how to select them there is a patch in the out in the tracker about the outliner double click to to select which unfortunately is it stayed in the old I don't know if it has been migrated to the new system, but it stayed in the old um, fabricator and I hope it can be brought up because it was pretty handy. Basically double click on the collection icon to select the, the objects within, but also use a similar concept for the selecting a transform. How would it work? So I'm going to leave that tab open as well. Sorry. I, I, I promise it's tab always open here. Um, next, I would love some physics improvements. Who wouldn't? That's more of a long-term thing. Not really long-term, well, long-term as in 2023, 24, because simulation nodes are supposed to come in some shape or form to um, 3.6, uh, at least the very basic implementation of simulation as in like loop in, loop out. Whatever physics solver is inside, that is a separate topic. But the concept of simulation nodes, it's um, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's happening sooner than later. But of course, physics is a huge topic, and it will be in the future. There are good right clicks proposals for muscle sims and more. A view or profiler that tells me what objects slow down the scene. Yeah. But what is slowing down, right? Slowing down in which level? In um, can be many ways, right? Can be drawing, can be calculating your modifier stack. Uh, yeah, I think developers might have some of, some of that. But uh, how fun! And I, I might need to start learning Spanish as to cheap in your next stream. Well, uh, the Spanish live stream is of course longer because. Spanish people, you know, Spanish speaking people, we just go on. Uh, but you're welcome anytime. It's called Blender Oi, as in today in Spanish. Very uh, creative. Next question. No for me says, Hi Pablo, is there some design and development for more intuitive selection in geometry nodes? Right now, selection in geometry nodes is more mathematical based, which is good in some cases, but many times we need more direct approach to select vertices, edges, and faces for procedural modeling or user input, for example. I found this solution from one developer and created an idea to discuss more practically or to simply enhance or complete his approach to fit Blender logic more. P.S. Vertex group is not sufficient enough because it's applicable only on base mesh 
and this new solution will apply selection in the node tree itself. Um, I haven't seen whatever discussion, is it the one? No, is it the one? And this is selection uh, you're mentioning, but um, but yeah, this is something to bring up uh, maybe to the geometry nodes um, module. But yeah, I, I, I agree, select, like being able to select vertices, to interact with vertices, also to preview vertices, um, whatever results, like the viewer node we have, but even better with like, I don't know, drawing indices in the 3D view or drawing, um, yeah, drawing your results in a different overlay types, that would be amazing and it's, it's, it's a foundation. Hi Pablo, Blender Edit Mode Select should have Select Sculpt Mode Edit with two options, in a short select but or from the last action. It works so that all edges added to Sculpt Mode are selected and changes have been made to it. You want to ask the Blender programmers that make that feature, I hope you want to. <laughs> I'm very sorry to tell you this, but don't let me do it. Blender needs that feature. And by the way, it's already upgraded to the Spirit Mesh Filter. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm following, but take a look at the comment on the most recent post on codeblender.org and see how they want Blender 4.0 to be. Thank you. Um, I, I, I have a bit of a hard moment to... What is it? Sculpt mode select. So why would you... Can you, can you use like a mask for convert from mask to object selection? Um, so we had a, having a hard of a bit, bit of a hard time following that question. Um, well, what is it? The, the right the the last question here. By Blender four, right click select should move to Blender door. Hey, have you been listening to conversations we've been having with Francesco and the team? Huh? You see because we actually are thinking about it. Uh, like I mentioned last year that we plan this year to maybe simplify uh, Blender.community, the website, um, like the, to, to shut down Graphical now that we have the billboard and um, move some communities to other places. Uh, Blender chat is a now an official chat platform. Um, Blender today, it's mainly used just to share some videos, but community could also use other or places i don't know it's we have so much spam but sometimes it's just a spam festival mm. but there is also um right click select which could become something in blender ideas unfortunately it's full of spam and makes no sense <laughs> studio blender dork is thankfully not full of spam and there is no need for anyone to be able to see exactly who liked a comment a content or comment i i i i like to I think it's important to see who liked a who liked something because you like that way you can see if if, if people like um, have fake accounts. Last last week there was a, a, a question here in Blender today that had like multiple accounts starting with like with their name. The name had two characters each one. They were all made uh, five minutes ago and. It was clearly spam. So to, to me, that was actually very handy to see. I went ahead and removed all those accounts. But um, I mean, I even answer, I managed to answer the, the question, but yes. Uh, you wouldn't believe like what people go, uh, like in order to get their ideas voted, uh, they make fake accounts or they get people from, um, I don't know, with the, with the same domain name uh, to vote and Anyways. Paul Piel says, uh, do you think in the future we'll get more and also different kinds of assets that are included in the Essentials Bundle? Yes, absolutely. Actually, there might be already for 3.6, some um, like base meshes included and some other uh, basic materials because the system to support built-in assets, it's, uh, it's, it's done. It's being used in 3.5 for the hair, um, uh, modifiers, node groups. 
So yes, there will be absolutely basic meshes and different materials. Yeah, there absolutely there will be. And uh, of course, there will be a, a community um, uh, reaching out to the community for this. Also, um, there might be discussions already on Dev Talk regarding this. Um, but yeah, we would like to get whoever from the community can make the best basic meshes. And um, they should be also be lightweight because uh, you you don't like we don't want to make blender heavier and also because um, you don't need that many vertices to start sculpting it has to be something that works like if you do remeshing for example and it works as you expect i think this is something that unreal does a pretty good job with their quick cell bridge no need to manually get certain assets from some place on the internet everything is just directly accessible inside the software itself yeah, but Quicksil Bridge, it's quite heavy. Um, so there is a there is a few ways to go about this. Like I think Quick Quicksil Bridge only works on Mac and Windows. So I think they can they can have the luxury, so to speak, that because they only ship. I don't know if they they only ship, but if you only ship a installer like a like a Windows installer, you can have as a step in the installer to have uh, more things to download online without Blender itself having to connect to the internet, which is great actually because it makes things very safe. Um, also, Blender doesn't connect to the internet, it's fantastic. However, um, yeah, if you ship Blender as a zip file, then these people are not going to be able to access those. Um, and also, if you install Blender from Snap or from other platform like Blender Store or from Steam, I don't know how that would work. But anyways, the Blender connect to the internet uh, concept, it's something that we would like to tackle either for 4.0 or right after 4.0, but uh, the sooner the better because it's, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's something that it's just, it needs, it needs to happen and it has to be made very transparent. Blender shouldn't connect to the internet unless you tell it to, like unless you purposely go and say like, yes, check for an update or yes, get me these files from blender.org. And it also, it should only come, it should only, at first at least, uh, only support like downloading things from blender.org unless you specifically go and add a repository or something like that. But it should be very clear. That's, it's a serious thing to access the internet. Um, next, hola Pablo, says slow kid. It's time again to use the transcendental powers of your live streams to give a shout out to features that are already in development. In this case, a future lifesaver for scenes with tons of assets. Selecting contents, hey, you found it. This is what I, I was talking about before. The feature started development before 3.3, didn't make it on time, neither for 3.4, 3.5, 3.6 gonna be the home for this baby. Thank you and enjoy your mate. Thank you. So outliner, it's a task. Is it a pull request? No, is it a, an issue? Um, eight months ago. It's crazy that it's been through so many releases. Like it didn't get into many releases, but it's only eight months ago. Um, so. I would also like to see this as part of what was the last as part of uh, a Blender at some point. So the task has been migrated, but the the actual patch um, hasn't. But there is some progress. There is there was even a working version. Um, yeah. Another one that would be that would be nice to have. Double click the icon to select context hierarchy. Would be nice to also double click on the object itself to get all the objects in the immediate collection. That would also be nice. Um, I'm gonna keep that open because I want to bring it up again. And, and actually look at the task and maybe do a reminder. The other day I did also one of those poke reminders uh, to another task about a fix on the tabs and I hope we can make it 
some point I'm gonna keep asking developers for review we need more people that are able to review patches and test them hello Pablo I was wondering if there is any plans to incorporate nodes from geometry nodes into shader nodes especially specifically the switch node and the scene time node um, I wonder actually I was, I'm wondering the same because switch node maybe maybe that can be done because it's it's a it, it, you compile the shaders and when it's compiled that, that's it but I don't know if no I think it it could I don't see a reason why not and also the scene time node I don't I don't see why not because you can draw you can use a driver right you can use a, a in shader nodes you can already use a value node like if you have this and you want it to have a value that changes whatever the color and you use here a driver it's already it's already working and actually it works it goes from zero to yeah it works so yeah i don't see why not but it's one of those things that um yeah that a community someone from the community could could look into copy pasting shading nodes in general need also some love even some monkey work love like the menu look at this menu is it's input output shader texture then like st and then c and then vector and then c again for converter it is not as tidy as the geometry nodes one which is now alphabetically sorted until and, and grouped in parts but within each group it's all alphabetically sorted which is Chef's keys. Um, hi, Pablo. Do you hope you have a nice day? And I hope you too. T1. I hope not T1000. I'm sure this was asked before, but are there plans to implement a faster GPU accelerated, possibly even real time fluid simulation system? I, I, would, I would love that just as much as you would. Um, um, there was someone from the community that was working on that. On the fluid sim on a, on a fluid simulation um, patch, and um, I don't know what's the status of that recently. I really wish, but no, actually, I'm afraid to say that there is not no one currently working on the like Montaflow physics uh, area of Blender at the moment, as far as I know. Maybe there's people who are not posting things online, but actually they are working on it and maybe communicating between developers, and I missed it. Uh, but other than that. It's, um, yeah, other than that, I don't know what to say. Physics. Sounds hard. Okay. In what language is someone asking the chat? In what language is Blender 3.4.1 written? The code, the Blender code is, is now more C++ than C, which is insane. Because, you know, Blender has been C for the longest time. And now there's more C++ than C code, which means fantastic things for people coming from, from new developers, from optimizations uh, side of things, for future proofness, for everything. With that, I'm going to go before my camera overheats again. And um, I don't want to mess up with it. Other than that, I think we are going to continue this because there's there is new stuff every every week and this week was very varied we had retopology we had um we had new um what else oh a new imported export there and possible new features in the future features in the future all right other than that i think i'm going to see you again what do you say next week on monday the 13th of uh March already and then the next Monday the 20th which is Tom's birthday so if you see him online send him now next week but the week after on the 20th and uh, over here let, let, let's let's do this again next week same place same time for another episode of Blender Today Live watch your 